G'day, Knight. AOS Coach here, and we are talking Daughters of Cain. You got your new book, and more importantly, you got the FAQ. Marcella, did it take 10 years, or was it just me how long this FAQ took to drop? It was a really long time. Like, what, two months? Yeah, I, I basically had to like beg and plead with one of my TOs to let me use the high gladiator tricks. I'm like, please let me use this new model. Let me use this new model. You know, which elves are finally good. And I'm like, when's this FAQ coming? It's four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, but it's out eventually. We've got a new book. We've got the FAQ. There's been a whole bunch of cool things that have happened with daughters, uh, a whole bunch of rules. And I'm going to hopefully break this down and understand the differences between books and how we are looking at the faction. We are going to have a bit of a snake more focused. Certainly we're not going to, we are going to talk about witch elves and, and, and all of the good stuff, but probably my guest, Marcella, Team USA, champion Daughters of Cain player, currently not running first on the ITC though, because Josh has gotten a bit of a free pass while you had to play Legion of the First Prince for Worlds. So that was kind of like, He's been keeping the seat warm, so we'll see who ends the season. Anything you want to say to Josh, by the way, Marcella? Uh, I'm um, coming for you, Josh. Your time is limited. Or enjoy <laughs> being number one. <laughs> we'll call it interim championship until you actually like <laughs> now that you're now that you're back, you guys can fight for the universal championship of Daughters of Cain. But we are gonna unpack this book. I love it. It's something that I've been playing with a long time. I'm more of a witch elf kind of person. You're more of a snake person, but together we're going to find out how, what are the tips, tricks, synergies? How do we make this book work? But before we get into that massive representation to, to tough crowd, you've already been told that you should be wearing a tough crowd Jersey. Where is it? <laughs> oh, it's upstairs in the laundry from this weekend still. <laughs> from summer slaughter. From summer slaughter. Yeah. How was it? Uh, Summer Slaughter was great. I saw some people that I haven't seen in a long time, like Jacob Berry. Um, and uh, the Tough Crowd, they rented like an Airbnb with like a pool and it was like very fancy house. So we had a lot of fun partying before and after the uh, yeah, Summer heard, Slaughter GT. I heard, uh, I was listening to Ridges from Season of War talk about uh, the experience and Joe Pagano's cooking and I'd heard your your podcast i think you were on was it um tabletop and beyond you had a bit of a bit yeah. of a review of, of your experience at the summer slaughter sounds like an absolute great event the honest war gamer had done like a really good coverage and we were doing the twitch stream so i was super jealous as i was watching from australia <laughs> so what's your what's your opening thoughts on the new daughters book you are a long-term daughters of cane player you've been playing it for a while we talked about it. We talked about it like what 12 months ago when AOS 3 came out and um, you know, you mm -hmm. gave me some thoughts and and ideas. What have you found since you've got a new book? Who who thought you'd get a new book like, within That was very months? fast. Yeah. The new book is super strong as always. Um, you know, Daughters of Cain is like never nerfed. They never get like a bad book or or a bad ruling against them. Unfortunately, they're in a I'd say a position of power right now. Um, and then I'm thinking like they're probably going to do like tone it down a little bit with like points changes or an FAQ, like maybe in the winter, maybe the battle tactics, or the grand strats will change. Cause right now they seem very, very easy. Um, and people are, are saying that it's unfair and you know, there's all this drama about GTs not wanting to allow book tactics, mostly cause the ones in the daughter's book is so good, but I'm super pumped about not having to run both snakes anymore. So yes. that's my number one favorite thing about the new book. No more bow snakes. And and it's bow snakes have still are still good. I think I'm seeing yes. people still running bow snakes, and it's not that they got nerfed. It's that the what, what's the old saying? High tide lifts all boats, right? So you've got yes. uh, combat snakes are now really good. Witch elves have returned to being good. You know, I love the high gladder tricks and what she brings to the table for witch elves and sisters of slaughter. So all of a sudden it's like, it's not this one, one size, like Marathi in the bow snakes. You've got so much variety, which I've been waiting for. Yeah. I'm, um, definitely the melee snakes, uh, have a lot of value in this book with the mortal wounds on a, on a two up, which is nuts. Yeah. Have, have you been enjoying the new book since it's kind of changed over? Or have you found the play style has changed? Or what have you kind of found as between books? 
Um, I really like the the new book. My play style has changed. I'm no longer playing like a shooting army. I'm getting like more into movement stuff. Um, and there's a lot of options too with the temples. I'd say that probably three of them are really, really good right now. And the other ones are, are, are good, but maybe not as good. Um, so I'm just uh, super happy to not, not that you had to play Marathi and the bow snakes before and they didn't get any worse, uh, but the melee snakes doing the mortals after they attack um, is, is really good right now. And there are ways to get around it. Like if you pull your casualties out of one inch so they can't do the mortals after they attack. So, you know, there's ways to circumvent it if you're playing against them. But uh, it seems super powerful right now. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, like Jacob Berry made a comment around the attrition, right? And I think it's probably one thing that I've kind of uh, noticed when I run Witch Elves is just the amount of attrition being that my Witch Elves have basically like a no armor save, like it's just tr a trash armor save. But then with the mean Gladian veterans, without the Heart of Fury, just how much damage goes through those Witch Elves and how that quickly they crumble. Yeah. So... Um, they've got some really easy tactics, but it's an interesting play with the Gladian veterans. And I've noticed that, you know, Canary certainly, I'm seeing lists now pop up with three Canary. I'm seeing Doomfire Warlocks hitting the table now because they're not GVs. Um, uh, because, like, they're a great screen, they're a good reliable cast. You can, you know, be like a Purple Sun delivery mechanism. There's a lot of interesting play with the Daughter's Book, which is what I've been really enjoying in third edition, especially with the new one. Yeah. So, are you looking at the chat? Are they, are I they am. Yeah, sorry. You? <laughs> <laughs> Damn crap, tough crowd. They're, but I'm getting a bunch more. Like I've invited Basil on the channel and there's a few others that are going to come on soon. So I think I've got Nate coming on and I've, I've invited to see if Anthony wants to come and talk Skaven. But, hey, that's not this yeah. talk. Um, <laughs> let's let's assume that I just picked up this book for the first time, right? So I'm a new Daughters yeah. of Cain player. How would you describe their play style for me? Um, if you, I think if you like being aggressive and kind of like yee-hawing into it, uh, or, you know, the YOLO play, you could do that with this daughter's book. Um, if you want to sit there and be tanky, it, uh, you could, if you really tried, but that's a lot harder. Um, so I think people that like getting into combat and like, uh, managing a whole bunch of, um, uh, buffs, uh, that are like in a certain area, and like kind of being a little bit of a castle, but being able to branch out and like being aggressive, getting into combat and killing yeah, stuff. They're, de they're definitely a combat focused army. Um, you've got the, you, you do have some shooting. I love the maneuverability and, and the play style, especially again, I'm, I'm going back to the witch elf focus in me, you know, being able to run and charge with my little musicians, being able to use the canary eyes to shoot and retreat. There's so much maneuverability in, in, in this faction, which I've really enjoyed. Yeah, me too. It's a very, um, I'd say it got a little bit less, uh, like your, your movement isn't as good as before with mirror dance changing, where now like they switch spots instead of teleporting outside of nine. That was something I used to do a lot was to teleport Marathi or something else outside of nine, either with the Calibron or with mirror dance. And now unless I pick Calibron, I don't have that option to teleport like before. It's Which funny because Mirror Dance went from the old way, so like the first edition book, it was just like Switch Two Heroes. Mm -hmm. Then it went to this new style, and then it kind of went back. Yes. Yeah, I never played the the first book, so I never played it the original way. That was basically, I remember playing against my mate Liam, and he would just run like 120 Witch Elves in Hagnar with a cauldron with like a five-up ward. It was just this absolute murder blender, um, and it just hurt. It was just pain. Uh, and then yeah. you got people like Chuck, who is just absolutely all about the Kraith, just absolutely yes, obsessed the with the Kraith. Kraith. Sisters of Slaughter. <laughs> they are. They're a cool faction. What other changes have you noticed with the with the new book? Um, were were there any changes with the snakes? Right. Yeah. So the biggest change with the melee snakes is before they used to do the mortals um, at the end of the combat phase and on a three up. So if it was at the end of the combat phase, that means your opponent gets to do all their attacks into you. And then whatever's left, you get to do the mortals. Now um, you get to do it right after the attacks are resolved, uh, which sometimes gives your opponents uh, some playback where they're able to pull out the casualties or they fight on death or you know they strike and fade 
or something like that and you can't do the mortals um but uh i'd say it's still better than doing it at the end of the combat phase is to do it right after the attacks are resolved so that's the biggest change with the melee snakes i think probably one thing that surprised me i thought marathi's command ability was going to change like i was bracing yes, going into this book i thought it was gonna be like the holy command which was going to be like a once per game you can shoot or fight or it was going to be a melee only command ability i'm surprised that it got Same. untouched yeah, I was, they, they like brought it down a couple inches, like what, six inches, but uh, I thought it was either going to go away or be once per game. And yeah, I also used to thought be 24 and then it went to 18. 18, yeah, like no normal command. I also thought they were going to change the way Marathi works. I heard a lot of people, the rumor that she was going to be able to take six per turn and that she's going to have 18 wounds. That's the rumor I heard. Lots of people were telling me that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that would be fine, but they didn't change how her wounds worked at all. Still the same. I didn't hear that rumor. That I was the American that rumor, rumor then. <laughs> really? Interesting. I'm glad. So. I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't do that. No, that's bizarre. I know, I know. It's always funny, like, watching people talk about Marathi. Everyone's trying to find the way to auto-remove Marathi. And the latest one mm -hmm. has been, like, the Brass Orb with Skaven. And there's always, like, this one Brass trick orb. people are trying. Uh, with the bl Brass Orb. So with the Brass Orb, it, it, does, it doesn't really work anymore. But basically the okay. theory is, is that with Skaven, there's this Brass Orb artifact and you basically peg your Pokemon ball at the person and uh. they, 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 they're taken off the table for the round or they come on at the end of the, at the end of the turn. And if you then shoot and kill, if you shoot and put all your wounds onto little Marathi, technically big Marathi's not on the table, so she can't get capped, which means you could kill oh. her. <laughs> it's just that rule sounds... science. It doesn't work. Yeah. No. <laughs> Someone no, tried you can't even purple, purple sun. sun her. You you can't purple sun. You can't yeah, my first it. opponent um, at Summer Slaughter tried to purple sun her, and I'm like, good news. I'm not going to be able to roll wards on the three wounds, but she's only going to take three wounds, and you, you yeah. just you can't take her off. There was some very funny Twitter just discussion, but um, but there's it's just generally it's always funny watching people try to find the 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 hacks into Marathi, but. You've enjoyed the new book. The play style's great. There's a lot of commonality to the way it used to run, but it's still fundamentally the same. Just some small tweaks either way. And I think for your yeah. side as well, um, Marcella, I'm surprised how little the snakes got touched. It's not like you, you didn't get any points mm. adjustments, if I remember correctly. Like really combat young. and bow snakes didn't go up. Marathi went up, but yes. and but then the endless spells went down. Like Heart of Fury went down 10 points, which I don't understand. Yeah, I, I understand them bringing down the Endless Spell points because they wanted to sell more Incarnates and the Incarnate eats things. So if there's more Endless Spells in the meta, people will play the, the Cron Spine. But the Incarnate was a little weird, or the Invocation was a little weird that they reduced those points. Yeah, I took it, I took it at 55 points, but the Blood Viper went yeah. down points as well, um, which I've played around with a little bit. I don't mind the Blood Viper. Uh, I love although... the Viper. And although now with with um purple sun it's a bit hard right and and cogs right Mar marathi and cogs mm -hmm. is just chef's kiss yeah oh yeah she loves cogs three casts re-roll and like i've gotten uh, you basically <laughs> get mind razor off every time when you've got little marathi and cogs mm -hmm. yeah and is then um oh sorry i was just gonna say no, 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 uh no. also you get the plus one to cast from the blood rack medusa so i've been having like marathi cast cogs and then having the blood rack Medusa have a plus one to mind razor and reroll that. So it's a lot more consistent. I will say that's probably the one change that I was surprised about is Marathi lost her plus one to cast plus one, plus one to unbind. So mind razor was always difficult on itself. Like I rarely yeah, got mind razor off. It was like a nice to get. And then she lost the plus one. So I'm like mm -hmm. going for arcane terrain, but now she's just automatically coming with cogs. Yeah. Is, is there any units that you've found have kind of gotten a glow up or improved between books? Maybe ones that you haven't run in the last book and now you're like, oh, actually now I'm now now I'm interested. Uh, heart renders. I used to run life takers for the plus one damage, plus one rend on the charge. Uh, but now that heart renders can shoot and automatically move, um, you don't have to roll a four up anymore. I'm taking them in every list. And also the battle tactic uh, for having the two heart render units shoot and move which is really hard to fail the battle tactic. So uh, heart renders got significantly better. They're almost an auto include having two of them in, depending on that, you that, know, what you uh, want to run uh, in your list. 
I would I would say they are a hundred percent auto include because you'll score at least two battle tactics, right? You'll yes. score um, one daughter's a cane battle tactic, and then you'll score what is it having two two units in uh, enemy barge territory through enemy lines, and enemy then there's lines. a daughter's a cane barge through enemy lines. So that's three, <laughs> and then if you charge both of them and something else, that's the other daughter's a cane battle tactic. So four. <laughs> I, I actually use my canary a lot for. What's the terrain one where you you claim desecrate? an enemy terrain desecrate their lands? That's another yeah. one that I'll use my Canary with. Yeah, there's like five most battle people... tactics right there for two years. <laughs> and this is yeah. and this is why some <laughs> tournaments are are, are, are banning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's pretty fair. Like it's it's not hard to score your battle tactics, but we're talking a lot of rules. And I thought, you know what? Let's actually get into the rules and your thinking around um, daughters. So we're actually going to go through one of Marcella's lists toward the end. So we'll kind of unpack this. But I'd love your interpretation as a very competitive player and a very successful one at that. Is how do you look at these rules? Do you build around them? Are these something that's just nice to have and they're situational? Are there are there traps that I should be avoiding? And we'll talk about the temples in a minute. Um, you know what your favorites are and the rules and things. Um, but you've got the battle fury, so it's a heroic action that you can carry out with your daughter's a cane, so long as it's not a monster. So you can't be a monster to do, which is only the shadow queen, right? That's right. Yeah, only the Shadow Queen is a, a monster right now. I think because so, the Avatar is a behemoth, but not a monster. No, yeah. but it's also not a not hero. a hero. Yeah, it's not. A so hero. it can't do a heroic action. Yeah. Anyway, if you use Battle Fury over like heroic leadership, heroic recovery, whatever, um, it gets to add plus two to the attack characteristics to the hero until the end of the turn. It doesn't affect the mount. So it means that if you did it on like a uh, Slaughter Queen on Cauldron, your Cauldron wouldn't get the extra attacks and your Avatar wouldn't get the extra attacks. It's right. just the Slaughter Queen on the top. Yeah, uh, I think Battle Fury is really good once you've used um, Finest Hour. Uh, cause now you have an option. Like if you still need to kill something later in the game, battle fury is great. Also battle fury, amazing on little Marathi cause she has the two melee attacks that both benefit from the plus two attacks. Uh, so if she like mind raises herself or battle fury, she can really kill something if she needs to. It's good. Actually, it's a good shout because Marathi can't heal. Right. So, you know, okay. I always find my, I, I always find myself just going for the extra CP and, and it's a 50, 50, this one, if, if little Marathi's in combat, it's actually not a bad shout, actually, when I, when you think mm -hmm. about it. Um, by the way, good question. Actually, I should have asked this earlier. Um, there was one new well, – actually, there's two new units for daughters. Um, first off was the High Gladiatrix. So what is your take and thoughts on the High Gladiatrix? I think if you're taking a significant number of witch elves, she's, like, a really good idea to take. Uh, she gives them plus one rend and plus one to wound to the – I believe the characteristic so you can further edit the wound characteristic and add it like interacts with the blood rights table or the different spells that gives plus one to wound. Um, so that really helps out the witch elves uh, kind of break through armor and do some damage, especially if those witches are in the bounty hunters battalion. So they'll have plus two damage or plus one damage goes to two. Yeah. Gladiatrix is great. Yeah, she um, she specifically gives rend to rend uh, and the the wound characteristic to witch elves and sisters of slaughter. You yeah. can't do it on snakes, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. I think she's a steal. She's an absolute steal with a six inch pile in. Um, can do the auto slay though. I've never pulled that off. Um, Me either. <laughs> I've never pulled it off. I even put like a like a little battle smith on like one wound left just to try to crack the whip, and I failed it. I'm like, oh. oh. The other one was the new Underworld's Warband, um, the K9. Oh, yeah. It's not the Shadow Stalkers. It's the uh, Shadeborn, something like that. Yeah, they um, they're a lot of points. I think they're like 260, 290 points, something like that, uh, for four little dudes. They teleport instead of move, and also teleport instead of retreat. So that's good. Uh, but I, I think right now they're just too many points for what they do, and they have something else special that they do, but I forget. I haven't run them yet. But I did buy the box and put them together. Yeah, I need to buy the box. I think it's a pretty cool. Um, yeah. It's a pretty cool one. Um, Ulfo is talking, though, saying um, the heroic action believes it works on the cauldron's attacks because it's not a mount. No, the cauldron, I think it is correct me if I'm wrong, 
I'm pretty sure the cauldron is counted as a mount and companions on the purpose. We have to have a look at the rules. I'm not going to kind of get it here, but double check your rules. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work on it. Otherwise, that would be incredible if you could get plus two attacks on the avatar because that's what does the real damage on the on the um, the cauldrons. I'm pretty sure, but um, double check the rules. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I'm I'm ninety percent sure because that, that was the yeah. first thing that went to my mind. Was like, oh, I can get two extra attacks onto the cauldron because I'm always running a hag queen on cauldron of blood. Always. Mm -hmm. One of the other rules you've got, uh, a new rule, is the All That Slaughter, which is a command ability that Daughters of Cain units. Uh, so basically, sorry, sorry, you got a command ability uh, that's a combat phase command ability. So this is going to um, this is going to go and compete with like All That Attack, All That Defense. But basically, um, you get exploding sixes. So if the unmodified hit roll for the attack is made with a six, you score two hits instead of one, and you make the the wound and save rolls as normal. What's your thoughts on All That Slaughter? I love All Out Slaughter because um, it kind of shows that they um, thought about like what happens if you have plus one to hit already from your blood rights table and you don't really like have anything to use your command points on in the combat phase. So you know, I'll have exploding sixes because I already have plus one to hit. So All Out Attack won't really help me. Or if I have a cauldron and I have plus one to save and I don't need it to like negate render or whatever, I don't have to do All Out Defense. I can use All Out Slaughter. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a great command uh, command ability in the combat phase. Can't use it in the hero phase if you fight then, and it's really good if you have exploding sixes from the prayer. So you can have two units with exploding sixes. So that's yes, kind of handy. Yeah. Probably yeah, completely I, unnecessary. Like they could have not put it in, and the book still would have been competitive and great. And people are like appalled when I bring up that there's this book command ability that other people don't have. But yeah, is there a, is there any units that you like to put all that slaughter on? Uh, the snakes, because uh, they have so many attacks. So they have like three attacks, four if Marathi is nearby within 18 inches and in combat. So with that number of attacks, exploding sixes, if I already have plus one to hit from the blood rights table, they're hitting on twos with exploding sixes. So that kind of makes up for all the ones statistically. You know, because usually you have yeah, the same you... number of ones and sixes. On you can do an incredible amount of damage with battle yes. with with the all out slaughter. I'm being told that the avatar and the elves are companions, not mounts. If that's true and they are, they can get the plus two attack. Then happy days, Whoa. even better, even better. I'm playing conservatively, so if if there's something that I'm missing, awesome. More more avatar attacks for me, and that's what does the real damage off the cauldron. Mm. But I'll have to check. I'll have to check the tapes. But very very cool if um if true. Um. I, I mean, I, I've loved using like all that slaughter on the Shadow Queen, being able to like spike some of the big damage too, especially with, you know, oh, if, yeah. you, if you happen to pull off Mind Razor. Um, I think one thing I've noticed though is um, when I run it with my troops, like I say, my Witch Elves who might have mm -hmm. the high Gladiatrix, who might be on the Blood Rites table, plus one to heal, plus one to wound. Um, one thing that stopped me is like monstrous rampages. Now that there's no Hunters of the Heartland, um they are so susceptible to being roared at and then you you, you don't have the yeah. all that slaughter that's true yeah um that's kind of why i take the prayer for exploding sixes instead because you can't like roar or do anything about that but yeah all out slaughter is great yeah yeah uh, rob rob rhyme is saying mathematically plus one hit is identical to exploding sixes so getting both is amazing so yeah that's that's yeah. probably your yeah. love <laughs> uh, all, all Daughters of Cain units have a ward of six. That's relatively um, the same, although they have clarified that Fanatical Faith is a ward, where before it, there was some mumbo-jumbo and it wasn't actually and blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. glad that was clarified. Nothing's changed. The yeah, other the thing, thing is... Uh, the only thing that the, the wording changes, so now I play Little Marathi as having a ward because they made it a word and words happen before allocation. So before I, I wouldn't roll the words for little Marathi, but now I do. Yeah. It was a little loophole in the, in the old book yeah. because you didn't get a chance to negate. So yeah. um, that was nice that it was clarified. You also have the blood rights table. So um, basically, basically the blood rights table is almost the same. The, um, the, the difference is, is that they've gone from re-roll ones to plus one. So now it's still, 
plus one to run, plus one to charge, plus one to hit, plus one to wound. But then the war, the battle round five changed from save. It used to be plus one to save to ward. Or it was no, no uh, battle shock. No, no, oh, you don't run away from battle shock. And also maybe plus one. I don't know if it was plus one to save, but it was definitely no battle shock. Yeah, I, I, there was some. It was something. Like, I think this it wasn't reroll ones for save. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> what's your thoughts? In, what's your thoughts anyway on the on the plus one to, to you know going from oh. a plus one to a reroll? Oh my goodness, the plus one I think is so much. It adds so much consistency to your game. Where before, um, with the rerolling ones, um, I think that's uh, especially for the movement stuff, like plus plus one to run, plus one to charge. It just makes it more consistent rather than having to like depend on die rolls for stuff. Um, and also increases your maximum threat range. So if you can run and charge and now you can like maybe sometimes roll a six and actually add seven to your charge and then you still have plus one to, to charge um, after you run, then uh, it just uh, increases your threat range. And I think it adds a lot more consistency to the plus ones. And it saves command points too because you're not all out attacking anymore as much. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's great as well is you can't fail a three inch charge. That's right. You can't. Which means so you don't have to worry a, about it. Yeah, that battle tactic where you have to make three charges, unfailable if you're at three. And as we both know, <laughs> um, there is ways that you can tap into the blood rights and actually speed this up a little bit as well. So, And it's cool that there's actually multiple ways to kind of speed this up. So, um, yeah, no, very cool. No, it's very. Do, are, are, you, are you a fan of the blood rights table overall, how it works and – how do you even think about the blood rights table? So I'm looking at the side. My dog's trying to get into to, into the room. I think my <laughs> wife's gone to the gym. But oh, like, what uh, what are your thoughts on the blood rights? Uh, so I think the blood rights table definitely got better. And then um, I kind of like pick and choose um, like with the the hag with her sippy cup and the blood rack Medusa. She has the Malusai kin ability that is similar to the sippy cup, except it's only in the combat phase. And it's only for snakes. So I kind of like pick and choose where to advance the blood rights table on my different units. And I'll kind of plan ahead for the phases that are coming up. Um, so like if I'm on round two and then I might uh, witch brew one unit of snakes and then my other unit of snakes, I might uh, use the the Malusai uh, kin ability to advance them there. So everyone has plus one to hit when I go in and attack in the combat phase. Or if I'm trying to get plus one to wound on two units, I might split it up that way. Or if I'm just going to commit one unit to combat, I'll put everything into them. So the plus one to hit, plus one to wound in the second battle round. Do you find that you hold back your attacks to try to tap into? Because obviously, you know, the, the benefit there is table three, which is going to be the plus one to hit, right? And yes, mm -hmm. there's ways to get on top of this earlier, whether it's through like the Hag Queen Sippy Cup, whether it's going to be through... Um, prayers and things like that. Do you hold back your force in order to tap into the plus one? Do you just YOLO it and, you know, go for charges in turn one? Or do you try to find ways to get ahead with the blood rights table through abilities and spells and stuff? Like how do you play with the table? Uh, that's a good question. So I guess it depends. Like you never want to pick a fight. You're not going to win. So um, if I try not to commit too early, if I don't think I'm going to wipe the unit, I don't want them to hit me back because like you mentioned earlier, my saves are pretty bad, uh, especially if I'm running witches that have like two knives instead of the shield, or I don't have the Hagon Cauldron for plus one to save. Um, low wounds, uh, Daughters has a lot of like low wound count, terrible saves, an okay ward. So, you know, I don't want to pick a fight. I don't want to, I can't win. So I do sometimes hold back or I'll only commit Marathi to something that she can kill without taking any wounds herself. Because her taking three wounds is like a quarter of what she's going to do. You know, that's like a quarter of her value. So it's, it's important that you pick, you know, what you spend those three wounds on. You don't want to like spend three wounds on killing a unit that's going to unleash hell on you and do three wounds back. And you killed like 10 skinks and who cares? So, yeah. Yeah, you've got to be real. You've got to play well with Marathi. And, you know, I'll, I'll normally keep her around till about turn four. Um, 
sometimes I'll get her through to turn five, but you know, you, you gotta be really smart. And even if you can just get her to take two wounds instead of three, you've guaranteed yourself one extra turn, even on one, one, one wound Huge. and her, yeah. and her power doesn't drop that much by being on one, on one wound remaining. So um, yeah. you make the most of it. Yeah. I think the, the worst thing that happens when she brackets down is the movement. The movement starts going down a lot and that's, the the attacks aren't that much less. It's all, it goes from like eight to five attacks. Yeah, yeah. And hey, do exploding sixes, and you might get more hits as well if you use the all out <laughs> slaughter. And you can't roll oh, a monster, yeah. so. Right. Yeah. Um. By the way, interesting comment as well. Um. You know, they get the ally battle mage of Gur, and you get the plus two to the charge as well. So, uh, okay. who wants a human? Who wants a human in a doors of cane army? <laughs> That's right. Anything you'd also you'd add to the allegiance abilities for Doc? Um, probably the other thing I'd maybe mention as well, and it's kind of like just moving to like the fragility of daughters, is I played around with, um, and I know you're a bit more high drops than I have, but I've just found in the current Gladian veteran um, meta, I, I always want to go first because I want to get that Heart of Fury up ASAP because my mm. witch elves, my witch elves just melt. So I've been oh. going a lot of battle regiment and I've just been like, yeah. Turn one, throwing down that 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 um, heart of fury. <laughs> I I think I, I do it. the opposite as you. I um I deploy in a way where they can't get to me round one, or I screen out. So if they do get to me, then they kill you know like the harpies or or the witch elves or something. Um, and then I want to go second because I want to double turn them and then have like you know half the time maybe double turn them and then like destroy their screens and then get to something good. Uh, but yeah, I, I prefer to go second most of the time. Yeah, it, it obviously depends on the matchup and who you're up against. Yeah. I usually try to fish for the, the double turn between turns two to turn three, That's just because time. then I've yeah. got more reliability and more of my buffs, and I'm less reliant on being within the 12 inches of the um, the glad, gladiatrix, whatever it is. Yeah. But overall, good abilities, and then you kind of rewarded with extra sub factions. Um, you've still got the same factions. You got, you know, Hagnar, Drake, Ekraith, Calibron, Keltner, Xantha, Kai. Some of them have changed. Most of them are relatively similar. Um, what ones do you like with a, obviously, with a snake focus and a mindset? Uh, so originally, I tried out Hagnar for a while because. Um... With Hagnar, I was able to get Marathi hitting and wounding on twos in the first round. And then, like, with Mirror Dance, I would also, like, it, when I switched the heroes, I'd add, like, five inches to her movement. So she would, like, move 19 inches effectively and then, like, be hitting and wounding on twos with exploding sixes and, like, really destroy something. So I played Hagnar that way for a while, like the Alpha Strike army. But now I've moved more towards Xanther Kai because I use a lot of snakes. And I'm playing a little bit more reserved and defensively and like less alpha strike. By the way, yes, I 100% agree with you. Um, when you pop up that Heart of Fury in the early turns, it's like, please don't roll a six, please don't roll a six, yeah. because I don't want it to disappear. <laughs> I want it to stay a little bit long. Uh, I've had like one or two games where it's actually exploded and I have rolled a six when I've gone in for the charge, which has been incredible. I had a great yeah. game against Seraphon. Um, where I did I did roll the six as I charged like two units of witch elves in and Marathi, but mm -hmm. normally I'm just praying not to roll a six because it reduces the, the the obviously the damage by one and it does do extra attacks, but I don't want it that early when I'm not taking advantage of it. Yeah, it is nice that at least it stays until the end of the combat phase, but then you have to pop, pop it up again and your opponent might have a chance to hit you before you get it up. Which also reminds me, one other change that I've absolutely loved in Daughters is the cauldrons no longer need to activate their avatar. Yes, yes. <laughs> the avatars are really good when they're swinging around on top of the cauldron. They do so much damage. So much and I damage. Hear you, and I hear you're doing an awesome conversion with a uh, another avatar oh. on cauldrons. Yes, I'm using uh, this avatar, the 40k avatar, and I'm putting it on top of the cauldron like this. And then maybe magnetize it so I can like transport it without like having a huge thing or, but yeah, I'm um, super uh, pumped to get that together and painted. I'll be honest. I, I was disappointed that they didn't give us the new avatar. I knew yeah. we wouldn't because it wasn't dual boxed. Like when you looked at the box, there was no AOS logo. I was just praying and hoping somewhere that we could <laughs> use that new avatar as opposed to the, the statue of Jesus, the, um, yeah. the T-Cross avatar. <laughs> 
The one in Rio, yeah. <laughs> like, it's just such a cooler model. But so you've been generally playing like Hagna and Xanthar Kai when it comes to yeah. snakes? Yeah, yeah, definitely Xanthar Kai. I was resistant to Xanthar Kai for a while, uh, but then I, someone convinced me to, to try it, and I did, and I really liked it. So the fight on death is, is so good. If 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 I if like imagine like I don't really understand exactly why fight on death sounds good like why why is that good to you? Um, so it kind of per it's um kind of makes them maybe not more tankier, but you have some recourse if you get hit first or um, they don't get a chance to attack it, where at least they get to attack something before they die, and um, they can also pile in and fight. Um, so they can kind of like reach some stuff where it's not like they just have to fight in place. Uh, the only downside is they can't do their mortal wounds when they fight on death. Um, so, and also if they fight and then someone uh, chooses to activate and put their attacks back into them, they'll get to fight again in the same combat phase. So it's, it's a lot of damage. Um, and if you have the, uh, the, I think it's the command trait where you get to rally on fours. They can just like keep coming back and fighting and then fighting on death. And it's, it makes it really annoying for your opponent to have to deal with that. And the crown of woe is just such an awesome command ability to bring up models back on a four plus. So uh, oh, yeah. using the rally command. Did, um, yeah, did the Xanthar Kai rule get FAQ'd? Jonathan just mentioned that, um, it's uh, only from melee attacks, so it doesn't work on a stomp. It doesn't work in shooting. Doesn't work when stormcasts die and explode on you. So just melee attacks. They did. Yeah. I, I'm obviously, like Drakey Ganeth and the Kraith are not good for you because you're obviously a snake focus. We're not saying, folks, that it's not it's not good. It's just from a snake oh, point of view, yeah. you, you you can't really take advantage of it. Um, have with the snake mindset. But do you find, like, what, what are your thoughts on, like, Calibron and Keltner for a snake-type build? Uh, Calibron is really good, I think, for the movement. Um, and I think they, like, changed a little bit of the wording where, like, I think any hero can do it now, right? Yeah, any Calibron hero, where before it was just one of your generals, so either Little Marathi or whoever you pick to be your general. Um, so they made Calibron a little bit better that way. Um, uh, just to just to retract a statement, yes, it's zealous orator. That is mm -hmm. the command trait. It, the crown artifact of crown no of rally. woe is yeah. the no rally within nine. I, it's the same hero in my army that has both. I always do the <laughs> I always too. do the hag queen yeah. on cauldron <laughs> that's got the the no rally, no inspiring presence bubble within nine. I charge it in to get the, to to boost that to fifteen. It's doing rally on a four up. It's the same hero. Thanks, Mark. Uh, appreciate that. You can always count on chat to find the. The mistakes. <laughs> uh, uh, anything else for like Keltnar and Calibron just from a snake kind of point of view? I haven't seen anyone try or use Keltnar at a GT yet. Like it must have happened. Um, and I haven't tried it out either. So it, it looks okay. It's not bad. It didn't get worse from the last book. It's just that everything else I think got so much better that maybe it's not utilized as much as before. Yeah. Like in isolation, um, being able to retreat and charge is great. Yeah. But would I take retreat and charge over plus one to the blood rights table or fight on death? I feel like those two are just stronger than what Keltnar offers because Keltnar is just situational. Yes, it's true. Good, good question from the chat from the the bad axe is um, how would you deal with um, Lumineth Realm Lords as daughters of Cain? I've got a buddy who's having trouble putting on the spot here. Ooh, uh, I guess it depends on the type of list. So if they have techless um, and you want to get spells off, I would either move or deploy outside of 30 of him so that he can't auto unbind your spells. Um, and then I would try to find some way to tie up his shooting uh, if he's got a bunch of sentinels. Uh, so maybe throwing either little Marathi or big Marathi at the sentinel so that they can only shoot at them. Um, and then if they have foxes, I would try to shoot their foxes yeah. if I had shooting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you got like the avatar shooting or Marathi shooting, try to take on, like don't try to get the foxes into combat. Um, yeah, don't try to charge them. But. And probably be be smart with your positioning because like, obviously they're going to unleash hell. So they'll, depending if you've got snakes or witch elves, they will start dying and you'll lose some of your benefits. But mm -hmm. um, I think for me, like the number one thing is don't rely on your spells. 
like yeah, yeah. If, if you happen to get one it's nice but um play to your strengths play to your yeah. movement um and because you got a lot of speed so you can kind of manipulate around the board yeah and another way to deal with the sentinels is to kind of deploy marathi like towards the center up as far as you can and then everything else way back so if he wants to shoot anything that's not marathi he has to get within threat range of marathi yeah. i like other. it I like it, but hey, who knows what's coming up? We got we we do have Lumineth and Zinch coming out with two new Ooh. books soon. Zinch, so stay tuned. Who knows how they're going to change? Um, sure. But overall, what I'm hearing is Hagnar and Xanthar Kai are probably the best two of the builds when it comes to snakes. Yes, absolutely. Um, what about your command traits? I think we've already kind of spoiled this one here. Uh, when it comes to your, your 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 command traits, there are six, seven to choose from. You got arcane mastery, uh, bathed in blood, fueled by revenge, ze zealous orator, uh, master of poison, sacrificial overseer, and true believer. Do you have a favorite? And if it's what I think it's going to be, do you have a second favorite? Yes. Yeah, so my favorite is the four up rally zealous zealous orator uh the other one that i considered is uh the iron scale one where plus one attacks um because like if the stars align and you have the marathi in combat the heart up and you roll a six and you kill something with the iron scale and you use this thing that's like plus a thousand attacks for your snakes or maybe you get half of those and you only get like plus two attacks for each snake so that could be good too if you have a whole bunch of snakes in the iron scale is fueled by revenge Plus one attack. I, I don't mind true belief. If I if, if obviously zealous is my favorite first one, right? I, it seems like the go-to one with daughters. Yes. But if I'm running like because like I'm never making Marathi my general, right? So I'm normally using like a mm -hmm. hag queen or some type of cauldron. Um, if I speak if I do like a slaughter queen on cauldron, um, I, I like mm -hmm. true believer as well, just getting a bit more of a guarantee that they'll be earlier in the blood rides, get the ward a little bit quicker. Um, especially the slaughter queen who wants to get in and do combat. Um, yeah. getting an extra round to the blood rights is always nice. Yeah, and that could help you achieve the kill something with your general battle tactic too. Or if you fight yes. with the Slaughter Queen in the hero phase, that could be very helpful. Get the plus two attacks using the uh, the heroic action. Um, oh, yeah. And if you want to double down and be nasty like Mark um, is asking about the Incarnate, do you Ooh. like the Incarnate in Daughters? Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I feel like 400 points in Daughters is worth more than 400 points in an Incarnate. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't use it, but uh, but yeah, the Incarnate I, I think is really good for tying up the other person's army for a while until the Incarnate can die. So you get like two turns of them fighting the Incarnate, maybe more if they don't do as much damage, where you can like run around and score points or kill other stuff. But uh, I think overall probably 400 points in daughter's stuff rather than incarnate. I, uh, I explored this actually. Um, I thought about doing Marathi and the incarnate, which is oh. a thousand points. I thought that would be really brutal, right? Because as an opponent, how do you handle that? How do you handle both Marathi and the incarnate? That could be challenging for a lot of people, but that doesn't then leave you a lot of like points for the rest. So it means yeah. my cauldron's dropping. Um, could it be an alternative to Marathi? So, you know, drop yep. the 700 point Marathi, get yourself something similar, and you got an extra 300 points to play with, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, that would be the option, I think. That would be the way to yeah, go I with think, the Incarnate. In a I think that's how I would do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's how I would do it is I wouldn't drop the cauldron to get the Incarnate in, but Marathi. And I'm seeing yeah. more and more lists drop Marathi because almost at 700 points, um, I, 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 it's hard to justify in some lists. It's true. Any other command traits you like? I think they're probably the ones that kind of, I, mean, I guess it depends on the build, right? There's some that, like, I don't think Master of Poisons is one that I'd probably run. Um, yeah. Like, Bathed in Blood, whoop de doo like, like, heal a wound. Yeah, the Sacrificial Overseer seems, seems okay. But, yeah. The but arcane definitely. mastery is interesting, but for me, yeah. the spell law, like I'm, my, my wizards aren't strong enough to, I'd have to, I'd have to go this plus, I can't even take master of magic. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think zealous R Raider is the way to go most of the time. Yeah. Why, why is the four up rally so good? Uh, Cause it makes it, 
like for example, I had a unit of 10 snakes and I think nine of them died and I rolled like a four up on seven of them. So then I had like eight snakes. So like if your opponent fails to kill off the entire unit, it so quickly can bring back almost every model in that unit over one or two turns. Uh, so it kind of, even if, um, you know, it doesn't really matter if that unit is gone, it makes your opponent spend more time and energy trying to completely annihilate a unit rather than let one live just so the rest of the unit can come back. Yeah, and depending on how the combat's gone for me, um, I've been really fortunate a few times where an opponent has, like, tagged my witch elves. Um, mm -hmm. They haven't gotten the full unit in combat. So through attrition, I've been able to pull back and get out of combat just by pulling out of models. And mm -hmm. then when it comes to my turn, I can pull down a, a four up rally and then grow that unit back. So, but you're right. Even like one model, if you can run away, you know, retreat, pull, pull models out, you can re regrow those units quite significantly. Oh yeah. So they come back so quick. Yeah. Especially for you, who's running two wounds on snakes, right? Like my witch elves, I'm getting one, but I'm getting an industrial amount of dice. Like I'm rolling 20, 30 <laughs> dice. You have to bring a bucket time. to roll with. Yeah. <laughs> Ice apple or something. No, we won't go there. <laughs> artifacts. Do you like any of the artifacts? So you've got uh, four that are specific to Daughters of Cain heroes. You've got three for wizards, three for two for priests. Um, do you go into this at all, or are you going more to the universal type stuff? Uh, usually I pick the Crown of Woe, and I put it on something with a big base. So the the hag on cauldron is what I usually put it on. And if she she can shoot and kill something. So if she shoots something with one of her six shots and it dies, then it goes to 15 inches, which is really good. So your opponent won't be able to rally your inspiring presence. Um, if not the crown of woe, um, I also like the shadow stone for plus one to cast from the lore of shadows. So that won't help you cast like mystic shield or arcane bolt or in any endless spells but it will help you cast stuff like Mind Razor. I am sad that we've lost our um, our reroll ones uh, artifact for prayers. Like there was always oh, that. Yeah, the Iron Circlet. It was so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the Shadow Stone is good, especially if you're trying to um, you're tr trying to get off like Mind Razor. And as Mark's <laughs> saying as well, you know, if you've got cogs there as well to get the reroll to the cast, it's just such a good, reliable way to to get extra spells off. Yeah, definitely. That's what I currently run now is I use a Warlord Battalion, get an extra artifact, and I take the Shadow Stone. I, I'm I'm not against the Rune of Cain either. The first time the bear yeah. is slain, uh, it can fight before it's being run. If, you, if you're obviously building a combat-focused general uh, or mm -hmm. a hero, actually. Yeah, the, the Rune of Cain is pretty good. Um, I've also taken Blood Sigil in a couple of lists I've tried. So I can have two prayers, and then I pick the prayer that advances the Blood Rates table and the Exploding Six prayer, so I have the option of which well, one. Fu funny you talk about prayers because here they are. <laughs> um, so we've got you've got, what, six spells, six yeah. prayers? Um, now I play a lot of Marathi, so she's my primary caster. She, she, she knows the entire lore of shadow. So, um, I don't have to make too many choices, but what are your favorite ones to cast? Um, is it just mind razor? Um, what else do you tap into? Uh, so I use D to shadows sometimes if I need little Marathi to catch up to the big one so that I will be in position next turn to fight in the hero phase or shoot in the hero phase. Pit of Shades I use very rarely, only if um, I already cast Black Horror of Olgu and I still need to do a couple more Mortal Wounds to kill something. Mirror Dance I use very often, um, and that's because I will deploy Little Marathi right up on the line, and then I'll have Big Marathi within 18 inches. And then uh, you have to switch the models, and then they have to be within one inch of each other. So what I do is I put Big Marathi one inch in front of the little one. So she's effectively five inches in front of wherever little Marathi started. And then you get to move after that. So that's like a 19 inch move for Big Marathi. You can really kind of mess up your opponent's plan and get into things that maybe they didn't think that you'd get into. Uh, uh, just, just a quick, just a quick good. one. Uh, Sunny, yeah. yes, Big Marathi and little Marathi can be on the save. That was a change that happened in the second book. So yeah. Um, I'm glad they got rid of that weird interaction with, with Marathi. 
Oh, yeah, where she turned into the big one. Yeah, but now you have both. Um, the withering for plus one to wound is good early in the game before you have plus one to wound from the blood rights table. And Shroud of Despair I really like um, when I use it combined with the Crown of Woe, where I will cast, if I have nothing else to cast, I'll cast Shroud of Despair on something, do like a couple damage, and then they won't be able to Inspiring Presence for the Battle Shock. And so the, the more of them will run away. I have never cast the Shroud of Despair. I think I've I did never it cast maybe it. twice. Yeah, it's very rare. <laughs> I, I really like the Steed of Shadows. I often will take the Arcane Tome on the uh, Medusa, the, the um, little little one, yes. not the not the Iron Scale, the other the little Medusa, um, mm -hmm. because her, her shooting attack is awesome, right? That 8-inch Mortal Wound bubble. So I'll often tap into like the Steed of Shadows to get her up really close to then do the, do the shooting attack. Oh, yeah, the 12-inch um, shot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's 12 inches. I was thinking maybe it used to be eight. I don't know. But, yeah, it's it's even better, even better for me. <laughs> um, I really enjoy – I've lately I've really enjoyed the Pit of Shades because we've had a lot of Nurgle, uh, or at least I've played a lot of Nurgle. So, so being slow, able to roll yeah. the 2d6 and they're so slow. I've also played a lot of Undeath too. So, that, you know, playing like zombies and things like that, being able to just – do a bunch of mortal wounds to those low movement models. Fire Slays is another one. A lot of low movement if they're not running the magma drops. Um, yeah. I, I've really enjoyed Pit of Shades lately. Yeah, those mortal wounds really help, especially if you already did Black Horror and you need to and you want to do more damage. Yeah, or like you want to put Black Horror onto something that's you know uh, far away. A, a key. Yeah, or even like just like a, a, a critical um, hero. I, I often use like um, Black Horror on a hero. But if I want to chip away at like screens and things like that, yeah, I'll use Pit of Shades to kind of chip them down or get Marathi out of combat, you know, and then hmm. do whatever I need to do. Uh, Mark calling out that the Mirror Dance move is genius. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, ha I haven't played enough with Mirror Dance. Again, I, I think I'm just very combat -y. I just want to get into combat. Um, and I think, yeah, I just don't play, I don't play around nearly as much with Mirror Dance as I probably should. Oh, yeah, I love uh, movement shenanigans. Make me happy. What, what are the heroes that you like to play around with Mirror Dance with? Usually Little and Big Marathi. Or if I want to get the, um, if I want, like, to do buffs on specific units and I need to, like, switch where the Hagon Cauldron is for Witch Brew or a Prayer, and I need her closer to the unit I want to buff, I'll, I'll do that in the hero phase and then buff after. See See, that's where I use Mirror Dance is to reposition my buffs, and um, that's probably where I use it. I probably don't use it enough strategically as an offensive play. I use it more as a defensive switch where the battlefield's kind of moving around. Maybe mm -hmm. my Witch Elves have run up too quickly and I've got myself out of range. Like, shit, I need to fix this up. Oh, yeah. That's uh, very versatile. And so you, could do, you could do both, play it both ways. And Sunny, yes, you can only take three wounds a turn. So both your turn and your opponent's turn. Marathi, it's not a phase. It's just your turn. So she can only ever take three maximum. Um, you've got your priests. Um, you've got your six prayer laws. Do you have favorites that you like to tap into? Do you run prayers very often? Mm -hmm. So the hag, I usually have her run Kakatkizma Murder for exploding sixes, um, which sometimes is a little bit redundant with uh the command for exploding sixes in the combat phase but this is useful because it works in the hero phase so if i want to fight in the hero phase exploding sixes um i'll do that and then or if i want to have two units with exploding sixes in the combat phase i'll pick this prayer and the other prayer i use a lot uh sometimes is the plus one to the blood rights tables i think it's sacrament of blood Sac yeah, yeah sacrament of blood See, Sacrament of Blood is the one that I go to first because I'm usually casting it with my um, my uh, Hag Queen on, on Cauldron. So, oh, um, two sippy cups. It, correct, yes. So I get two sippy cups. So if I need Marathi, I could like turn one sippy cup, Sacrament of Blood, and they stack, right, folks? They, they stack. Do. So, yeah, so turn one, I could get Marathi, for example, or anything I want to get into combat. Technically, Canada's turned through from the sippy cup and then the Sacrament of Blood prayer. Yeah, super handy. And then the other, I like the healing prayer a little bit, but not really above the ones that I normally bring to Catechism or Sacrament. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, now that now that witch elves and like I've been thinking a lot about my army and you know potentially pulling it back to not have Marathi but have more like witch elves on the table, going to almost like the first edition of build of having like big blocks of witch elves or at least having like lots of lots more bodies. I could see Crimson Rejuvenation, um, no, not a, sorry, Covenant of the Eye, Iron Heart, you know, um, especially with Night Haunt too. Like at the moment, Night Haunt going out there terrifying and stopping people from using Spire Presence. That could be a, a, a good spell to have up your, up your sleeve. Oh, yeah. Or people that use, I think, the Horror Ghast, the one that where you're not allowed to Inspiring Presence, that endless spell. Yeah. Or you the Mirror Match if they're going to. They're gonna use. They're gonna use the um, oh, yeah. the crown against you. <laughs> um, anything else you'd say from the prayers or the spells? I think they they're great choices. There's a lot of good options depending on how. Like even blessing of Cain, if you really wanted to re-roll the fanatical faith roll, although like you're just re-rolling a six up ward. I think. Yeah, I it used to be with Hagnar. It was good because you could re-roll the five up on wounds that weren't mortal wounds. But I think Blessing of Cain was, was kind of like nerfed a little bit now that they changed how Hagnar works. I mostly find that I'm switching between Catechism and Sacrament of Blood. Um, I just don't find that I need both, but at least Catechism and the Command ability is a fail safe. So if I fail the Catechism prayer, I've still mm -hmm. got the Command ability. If I get it off, it means I could have two units having exploding sixes. Um, yeah which can be incredibly brutal with combinations of other things. Yeah, it's true. Anything else you'd add here? No, I think, I think we got it. All right. I love this. I love <laughs> my daughters. Grand strats and battle tactics. Yeah. There's just so many great options. I love them. I love them a lot. Your grand strats. So do you, <laughs> I think we know the answer to this one. What, what's your favorite grand strat and, oh. um, <laughs> I like Bloodthirsty Zealots, where every I call it fight or die. Uh, so you either fight, which, you know, sometimes you can't do. If, if you don't, like, kind of keep track of where your units and the opponent's units are, you, you could fail that pretty easily um, if you're too far away at the end of the game and you don't have the movement to get there. But overall, I think it's easier than the universal grand strats. Um, and then I, people are very upset about how easy the, the grand strats are. And then the other one that's good is bloodbath i think if you have shooting so if you have a unit of bow snakes i think bloodbath is a is a good play there the rest the not so good the the bloodthirsty zealots the one that i kind of got to remind myself constantly because i'm always using two units of canary yeah you you do the shot and then you retreat which is great but i've got to remind myself to charge them in because otherwise yeah. yes yes otherwise <laughs> like this thing is not going to score me my grand strat so um, that's probably the one that I always want to think about. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've definitely failed it before where I, like, ran my units at the end of the game to, like, get barge through enemy lines and I forgot to, like, charge someone and I've not gotten it. But most of the time I'm able to score my grand strats. Yeah, you just got to make sure, like, um, depending on, like, how your build is, right? Like, again, I've got a cauldron, so I always want to charge it in to increase the aura of the crown. Yeah. Um, the high gladiatrix is six inch piling so I can get into when I need to. But if you're building, let's say bow snakes, you've got to get them into combat or something. So, or you've yeah. got like other little support heroes, think about how you get into combat. Otherwise, yeah, it's an easy one to fail. Um, and then speaking of easy, we also have easy battle tactics. Yeah. Cruel delight is like <laughs> the easiest one available, right? So you, yes. if you have those two units of canary, shooting not combat do not go the combat ones because you're just asking to fail it's true um, yeah uh the battle tactic so should be renamed like did you bring a legal list yes okay you get a battle tactic <laughs> yeah it is cruel delight enough for you to to bring two units of canary every time yeah i think every uh list i've made with a new book i bring two units of heart renders for the shoot and also, they do other battle tactics very well. Um, every time someone kills my heart renders, um, my joke is, oh, no, you killed my battle tactics. How will I score battle tactics now? Um, yeah, they're very, very handy to score points with. Yeah, and if you haven't looked at the War Scroll for Kenera, you can set them up in reserve. They've just got to come down before turn four. Um, and as Marcella's mentioned already in the, in the stream, 
you um, you can get barge through enemy lines, desecrate their land. Um, you could use clash of arms. There's so much variety and versatility. So um, while you might be tempted to use them as screens, um, just to because they're not GVs, um, okay. they're just so they're so easy to score two, three, sometimes even four battle tactics just by themselves. Yeah, the only time I really use them as screens is if I'm playing against Iron Jaws because I know that no matter how I deploy, they're going to be able to get into my stuff. So because I have so few models, I, I need to deploy them up as screens. But most of the time, I just try to deploy back so they can't reach me. But Iron Jaws can because they move so many times. Just to rewind for a second before I get your rest of the thoughts on your battle tactics, Jonathan's just reminded me of a comment that you mentioned in the Tabletop and Beyond stream. And you talked about in the in the, in the podcast how you love to destroy faction terrain. Oh goodness, I know that this yes. is one of your favorite things to do. Like you destroy <laughs> like you destroy Bill's pizza oven at, at Summer I did, Slaughter. Yeah. And Probably like at that. the cost of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think naught but destruction is a worthy grand strategy to tap into? So you've got to destroy a defensible piece of terrain. So the problem with that is not every GT uses defensible terrain, especially in America. I think other countries use it more where they'll just count like the big terrain as defensible or, or garrisonable. But in, in America, at least there's not a lot of defensible terrain features. So if your enemy, your opponent doesn't bring faction terrain, you probably won't find it on the table. So unfortunately it's not a, it's not a good uh, grand strat where I'm from. Yeah. Although it, yeah, I, I agree. Like we probably in Australia don't play enough of dis defensible terrain. Yeah, yeah. We play the mysterious landscapes of arcane, mystical and deadly, but we probably don't play enough of garrisonable and defensible and impassable terrain. But yeah, I probably wouldn't want to um, rely on that. Um, Going back to the battle tactics, so yes, we've got Cruel Delight, super easy. What about some of the other ones? Do you like some of the other battle tactics, some that are harder than others? Uh, Tide of Blades is basically like barge through enemy lines, um, again. And then if you have Witch Elves, you get an additional point. Uh, I don't bring two units of Witch Elves, so I don't score the additional point most of the time. But if you had a lot of Witches, that's a good option to get an extra point where I think in this general's handbook, getting an extra point is so much harder than before because now you don't get them for killing monsters and doing stuff with monsters anymore. So that's really a leg up. If you can score one additional point, that often means like the difference between winning or losing. Do you run Witch Elves or Sisters of Slaughter in, in a snake focus build? I only bring one unit to put them in the Expert Conquerors so that they can count as 30. And I kind of like guard them and I try not to get them in combat until the end just so they can, because I don't have a lot of models uh, to count on objectives. So I hold them back and I put them on an objective that's kind of far away or behind other stuff. So they count as 30 so people can't take that objective back from me. Is the bonus point worth including a second unit of Witch Elves or Sisters of Slaughter? It, it might be, but the list that I have now, I don't really have, I don't know what I would give up for it. Uh, it'd probably have to be like the Blood Rack Medusa. So I'd probably lose a uh, consistent Mind Razor in order to, to get another unit of Witches. Tides of Blades, for example, is another one where those two units of Canary are just so easy to score that battle tactic. And even if you don't have those two units of Witch Elves, you know, if you get the double turn or whatever it might be, uh, you know, most people are not going to focus on your your Canary. They're going to focus on the Witch Elves, the Snakes, Marathi, the Cauldron. They're going to go for everything that's not Canary. I find most opponents don't target the Canary. Um, yeah. The Tides of Blades is just an easy one. As we've already talked about, desecrate their lands, talk about, you know, barge your enemy lines. Um, yeah. Just another one up your sleeve. Yeah, Unexpected Attacks is, is very, like, dice reliant so i don't really like that i would probably only pick that if i had no other option is unexpected attack the where you uh shadow leap away and then make a charge because you have to roll a nine inch charge which There's might no be bonuses. Rollable, but it's still not great yeah, outside of the blood rights table, there's no bonuses, right? It's not like they can. It's not like the stormcast where you can deploy within seven inches, right? Like you know, would yeah. I gamble? Would I gamble a, an eight inch charge? No, probably not. No. Hatred by Chaos is not a bad one, but it's very situational. Obviously, if you're running yeah. Hagnar or, or Keltnar and you get matched up at a tournament, I 
I really liked that, but it probably wasn't enough for me to switch from Drakey Ganeth to Hagnar purely for that battle tactic. Yeah, same. Uh, have you played around with Executioner's Cult at all? Um, I have. I have not, but I've also only run the High Gladiatrix like two times. Um, but I feel like that's also relying on dice because the you can't even kill the hero with her normal attacks. You have to use that special ability. So it's easy to fail, I think. I failed it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 had a, I had a two up and I failed it on a one. Oh. I set up this perfect combat. I pulled back, you know, like I just did enough damage. This um, battlesmith, I think it was, was on one wound left. Oh. I went for it. And I rolled a one, and I failed that battle tactic. It's it's no different to there's a there's a sun's um there's a sun's battle tactic where you're gonna destroy a faction terrain. I you'd love it, and love um, it. gate breakers add plus one to that dice roll. And I went into a hearthstone, rolled that one. So, you know, compared Ooh. to yeah, like it's just like, if I'm gonna rely on a battle tactic, I, I don't want to be rolling a one. I want to be as much c control as possible. Yeah, me too. You never want to rely on dice, even if it's a two up. Do you find of the, so we're obviously if you're listening to this live or relevantly uh, relatively when we when we're recording this we're talking about General's Handbook 2022 season one outside of these battle tactics do you find there are other battle tactics the universal battle plan ones that you're tapping into we've talked about barge through enemy lines desecrate their lands are there other ones that you think daughters play into well um, I think against the odds is always good that's the have no enemy GV on an objective that you control. Um, the only thing is, uh, you might need that later in the game. So you don't ever want to use it like first turn or too early, unless you have literally no other option, uh, which in daughters, you usually, if you brought heart renders, you, you do have another option. Um, so that's a really good one. And then if you've got a really beefy general, then you could kill something with the general, that battle tactic. That's good. I try not to use it because I don't want to rely on having to kill something, but it's an option if I need it. Yeah, that's a good one, especially it depends on who your general is. Like if you've taken the iron scale as your general, probably not a good one. Mm -hmm, but yeah. if you've got a cauldron, if you've got Marathi, you've got some type of bit more beat sticky type hero, then yeah, that's a great one to choose from. Yeah. Cool. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. They're good choices. I think it's probably one of the benefits, right, is the book is strong got great unit selections you've got multiple ways to build the book you're rewarded with good grand strategies good battle tactics good uh enhancements good abilities overall you're in a re really strong spot regardless of how you want to build your daughters which leads yeah. us into one of the ways that you're building your daughters so um this is one of marcella's latest lists was this the sydney slaughter so summer slaughter list uh it, it was the summer slaughter list yeah we, and we then have, uh, in, in Australia, we have Sydney Slaughter, which is in June. Oh, so nice. that's, that's uh, UK has a slaughter event too. I think they got Sheffield Slaughter. So I think that's oh, actually yes. the original. Um, so your list, and I'll get you to kind of um, I, actually, while I read the list, I'll give you something, some time to think about this question from Mark. Okay. Any allies worth considering? So you think about that. I'm going to read out the list and then I'll come to okay. you for an answer. So Marcella's list was Xanthar Kai. Uh, you've gone Bloodthirsty Zealots as your grand, uh, grand Strat and Indomitable for your Triumph. You've got your Shadow Queen, so obviously both Little Marathi and Big Marathi. Um, you have the Blood Rack Medusa as, uh, with the Artifact of Power Shadow Stone for the plus one to cast, as well as the Mind Razor. You have a Hag Queen on Cauldron of Blood, which is the General, with my favorite combination, Zealous Orator, Crown of Woe and Catechism of Murder, although I go Sacrament of Blood. You've got yourself a unit of Blood Sisters, a unit of Witch Elves, uh, two units of Canary. Uh, you've got your Heart of Fury, and that comes in a total of 1990, nine drops, 85 wounds. You've gone for the extra artifact with the Warlord Battalion. So, um, and I'll be interested to learn about how you use Warlord because for me, I tried this combination, Warlord, Expert, Conquerors, and Bounty Hunters, and I didn't like it. I, mm. I felt much more confident as a daughter's play to go Battle Reg. But before we get into your list, what's your thoughts on allies? All right, so I have two. Uh, one is Gotrek, and that's because I see that uh, Josh Bennett actually has, um, he's had a lot of success, success with Gotrek. So I want to try it out. 
I haven't tried it out in, in months since like, uh, I want to say at the very beginning of like the new general's handbook, where I'm like Marathi go trip, let's see what happens. So I want to try it out again with the 15 snakes to see what happens. Um, so, so his list with Gotrek is 15 of the melee snakes, big and big Marathi, and a Gotrek. So you have like three melee threats that are incredibly hard to kill, and they do a lot of damage. So that could be a good ally. The other one is the Battle Major Gur, like previously mentioned, for the plus two to run, plus two to charge. And if you have an iron scale, then you can run and charge. Um, so you could probably get like a, a nine to run if you're really lucky and you get the plus one to run and the plus two to run from the battle mage uh and then so you have a nine to run and then you have a plus two to charge after that so that could really like increase your threat range um and then one that i really wanted to try for the lulls is sentinels because i think their war scroll gives them the spell where on a five they do mortal wounds so that could be fun to have something that shoots and does mortals on fives a couple of the other um, allies that I really enjoy as daughters all come from cities. Uh, Rune Lord, so getting a plus two to unbind um, and getting a double double unbind if I use a heroic willpower on it. So mm -hmm. I, I love that because 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 he's, he's not a wizard, he's a priest. So he gets plus two to unbind and dispels. And he if you use a heroic action on him, you'll get two of those. So great way to counter the endless spell meta. Keep an eye out on the channel next week. I've got a How to Defeat Endless Spells video coming. The Ooh. other ones that I really enjoy is like um, Darilia. Darilia with her crossbow to be able to pop wizards at long range, double shots if she doesn't move and can shoot off endless spells. The other one was the Frostheart Phoenix. I love the defensive aura that keeps my witch elves who are fragile, causing a minus one to wound bubble around the Frostheart Phoenix. So... Uh, it is a bit more pricier around the 300, 400 point mark, but it's a durable hero that um, I really enjoyed playing around with the daughters. But it is obviously taking up a lot of points. It is, yeah. It, that's not the one that comes back, right? The frost heart. No, uh, that's the flame. Or, that's the flame. flame. No, but okay. no, but um, it has this 12 inch aura of minus one minus to wound one. bubble. Nice. So um, you don't take it for combat prowess, but you know, one, it's super durable, right? It's got like a four up ward. So it's really hard to take down. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously really fast too, right? So it can kind of keep up while Marathi or you, whatever your combination is go, uh, goes around. Have they, um, Jacob, Jacob made an interesting comment around the blood rack, blood, the blood viper. Has that been clarified to get back its monstrous rampage yet? So it's really confusing because I heard the German yeah. translation has the, like the correct what we think is correct right but the other ones don't so i don't know if it's a mistake or if germany is the mistake or i i don't know i feel like they meant to have it but rules as written right now i would say no even though it's in the app all right all right so it, and, and by the way like the the monstrous rampage on the blood viper with this like cream on the top the fact that it can auto slay i really enjoyed the blood viper um, I yeah. played a couple against Google, right? Like, boom, I can slay a whole bunch without wards. It's it's been really good. Big base as well. Monstrous Rampage is a bonus. Yeah. I'm hoping it's clarified, but at the point of this video, oh. it's not on the war scroll. I guess it it has been clarified last night. Breaking news. <laughs> Stop the press. Yeah, I just pulled it up. Like, I literally just yeah. went into while we were talking the daughters of Cain, and the war scroll is not even on the errata on the app. So on on the website. So I oh. guess uh, the book is current. All right. Perfect. Great. Great success. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's talk your list. Let's talk your <laughs> list. How does this all work? Um, what's going on here? There's no bow snakes. There's no viper. You yeah. have low body count. You're high drops. How on earth does this work? So this is a kind of a tanky build, I would say, because you get plus one from the Hag Queen, 18 inches, and then the Heart of Fury is minus one damage. Um, so if you deploy like on terrain, you like start off with a plus two to save before all out defense. So even if they come at you with a monster and roar you. So it's it's somewhat tanky. Um, and then if you do get hit, the snakes can fight on death and hit back a little bit. Um, and then the other piece of tech that I did with my heroes is I have a warlord battalion so I can have the shadow stone for the plus one for mind razor. 
And so I'll have the Bloodrack Medusa cast Mind Razor on either the snakes or Big Marathi if she's the only one that can get into combat. Although I prefer to cast it on the snakes because they have more attacks and they do more damage overall with Mind Razor than Marathi, Big Marathi does when she gets it cast on her. Um, and then the Hag is important because she uh, does Witch Brew for the plus one of the Blood Rites table and her prayer for exploding sixes. So she's an important buff piece there. And she also stops the rally inspiring presence and also has a four up rally herself. So she yeah. does a lot of things in this army. I used to play really cagey with my um, my Hag Queen on Cauldron. I always kind of, initially I played around with it like my Hurricanum, like it's a buff piece, it sits at the back, I, I, it's fragile. I don't want to, I don't want to get into combat. I've been, way more aggressive with it and i've actually really enjoyed it a lot more because one the avatars now uh, activated so it does more damage earlier um it has impact hits um it does some good combat the and and as we've talked as well in the combination with the crown of woe if it can kill a model then that aura goes from 9 to 15 and on a big base that the cauldron has that that can shut that's off huge. like that's almost demon that's that's almost corn demon prince aura when you start going 15 inches yeah yeah, it's a, when you kill something, I try to like shoot something or um, kind of impact hit something to death because uh, you can rely more on that, I think. Um, and then it goes to 15 inches and they can't, especially they can't um, inspiring presence. And if they have a low bravery, like um, uh, Lumineth Realm Lord, Skaven, Seraphon sometimes has low bravery depending on their temple. You can really do a lot of damage if you like split up your attacks. So there's multiple units that take casualties and then run away. So I'm just I'm just reading one of the questions in the chat. Jacob mentioning, have you been able to get Mind Razor off the Bounty Hunter unit, referring to them the Blood Sisters, um, to get them to Avatar stat line? Uh, close. Uh, so I have been. Oh, like the Blood Sisters. Uh, yes, yeah. where they do like damage three. Yeah, especially now that they clarified um, the FAQ thing, so you don't have to worry about like if you change the characteristic twice or or whatever the FAQ use FAQ used to say. Um, but yeah, you can um, have the plus one to damage from bounty hunters and then mine razor for damage three on the sisters' attacks. I don't think I've done it yet though. With Maybe the with the it's rare to the stars line. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to get those stars aligned. <laughs> With the Canary Heart Renders, I know it was a question that came up in the chat earlier. I, I noticed one of them is in Bounty Hunters. Is mm -hmm. that just fulfilling the minimum ba uh, battalion, or are you actually trying to use them to get plus one against galley vets? Uh, it's just to fill out the the battalion. Um, and I should probably play around with having like both snakes in the Bounty Hunters and then not use Expert Conquerors because you need two galley vets for that. Um, which is the reason why one of the snakes is in Expert Conquerors now. So yeah, the, the heart renders are just to fill out the uh, the, the min two for uh, for bounty hunters. And I guess if you if you were to put like the heart renders, let's say in you know Expert Conquerors, I, I mean, I'm just thinking through some of my games, right? If you know as mm -hmm. my Canary gets shot off and I'm I'm on, I'm on one, two, or even three Canary left on the table. If any of them were on expert conquerors, then three of them are counting as like, you know, oh, nine on an objective. The harpies are oh, because they're battle not battle line. Yeah, they're so I couldn't put course. them in there. Otherwise, I would because they come in outside of nine and they move, and then I'm like, oh, I'm fifteen on this objective to your ten. But yeah, yes, damn, damn. I'm, I'm thinking bounty hunters as well. Like bounty hunters doesn't have the battle line requirement, but expert conquerors does. Yeah. Which actually, you've just reminded me, we didn't talk about some of the other rules in um, the general's handbook. So we got like the proving grounds and we haven't talked about, mm. uh, what's it called? Uh, bonds of battle, right? So bonds of battle allows you to essentially to fight into two ranks. Um, if you've got like a short range and you've got like a large base, how have you found both? Well, let's talk about bonds of battle. Has that inf impacted you as well? Or have you found that's helped you at all? Uh, I think it's helped me pretty rarely with the snakes because they have the two inch reach. Um, and then the witches can fight in two ranks already. So that's not super helpful. What it does help me with is like at the end, sometimes when you're wrapping stuff around, there's like one or two on each end that wouldn't be able to get in normally. 
but now because they're in a half inch of something that's in a half inch that they can attack. Um, so it's not super helpful, but it's, it's not bad. Yeah. I was just thinking like with the, with your, with your 25 mil bases, it's not going to be that impactful and we don't mm -hmm. really have battle lined with large bases, like 40 inches, your snakes. What's the, what's the melee range of your blood sisters? They, two are they inches. two inches? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're not going to be able to benefit really from that. Um, yeah. Cause they already reach most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there'll be some small benefits, but it's not a big change like when it happens to, I don't know, dragon ogres, for example. Oh, yeah. What, what about expert? Uh, what about, um, the proving, proving grounds? grounds? Uh, that's really good because I have a lot of Galatian vets in my list. Um, so if I, I'm like, if I have the witches alone on an objective and they, you know, control it right now and I'm worried that, Laryl is going to come in and destroy them or, you know, something's going to come in and get them off that objective. I can pick that as the proving ground and then kind of protect the witches or at least make it so they can't steal the objective back. Uh, so the, I like the proving ground. It kind of adds uh, like more decision points to when you're deciding if you want to go first or second in the round where you have to yeah. consider that in keeping your objectives. No, I like it. I like it. Have you found being high drops? Um, have you found high drops to be a positive, a negative? Because you are a lot of people are either going one drop or three drop. They're doing bounty bounty hunter plus battle reg, or they're going just straight battle reg. Are you mm -hmm. finding warlord is and you know co expert conquerors and 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 bounty hunters? Is that is worth, it worth it? it? Uh, yeah. I think I think it is worth it. Um, I think if I were to get rid of one of the battalions, it would be Warlord to make it just fewer drops, even if it's not like one or two drops, because uh, Expert Conquerors, the count is three is just so important. Um, and then the plus one damage one, I think, isn't as useful for me because not everyone has Galatian vets, but the count is three is always good, no matter who you play. Um, but uh, I do have to compensate a little bit for my high drops now because I have to either deploy defensively if I think they're going to go first or I have to kind of, if I, I see where they're deploying, I have to deploy a little bit more aggressively if I think they're going to give me first. So I kind of have so to how, kind of decide what I think they're going to do and, and deploy from there. So how do you deploy given your high drops, your fragile, um, mm -hmm. and you know, you may not have the heart of fury if someone was to alpha you and go first and get into your face early. Um, and the current battle tactics are rewarding you to be a more aggressive than you were probably in the last mm -hmm. book. How do you plan around that? What, what deployment tips would you give me and, and, and what goes through your head? Obviously opponent and battle plan will yeah. vary the strategy, but like what tips would you give me? Uh, always be asking about like threat ranges and always screen like you're going to get double turned if there is an opportunity for you to get double turned. So, you know, screen, deploy far back, um, and then ask about threat ranges or if they have shooting, you want to make sure that, you know, you account for their movement and their shoot distance, not just how far they can shoot when you're deploying. And also when you're moving, you want to always screen and consider the threat ranges. And then, you know, think about like the worst case scenario, like, okay, what if they make their charge? Can they do enough damage to get through the screen? Uh, or can they stomp? Do they have like, a, you know, like a D6 plus three stomp? You know, like that some stuff has, like, are they able to get through the first layer of screens? And how far back do I have to deploy the good stuff behind the screen? Who do you screen with? I screen usually with Little and Big Marathi. And then if I need to deploy the harpies on the table to screen because they can get to me because they're iron jaws, I'll, I'll screen with them, which is I can screen with the witches if I have to protect the snakes and the cauldron usually at all costs. I'm sure some people are probably listening to this wondering why would you, why would you screen with Marathi knowing that, you know, the more damage the Marathi takes early, the quicker you're going to lose her. Um, yes, you can only take three, but, surely that's risking this big 700 point model um yeah. why do you do it what's the benefits um how do you screen with them uh so the, uh so little marathi's minus one to hit so she's a little bit she takes a little bit maybe less damage than the big one and then if they charge the big one then she usually kind of kills whatever charges them 
you know, some of the time or does at least does a lot of damage to them. Um, so yes, she'll take three wounds, um, but sometimes it might be worth it to protect everything else. So it kind of depends. And I also don't want to, if I don't have to, I won't screen with her. I'll just kind of deploy everything back so they can't shoot at her or they won't be able to get into combat with her uh, top of one. Yeah, and, and what's great as well is um, one other reason, right, is this, you know, yes, she'll take her three wounds, but then it allows me to use the command ability to fight in, in the hero phase. So if she yeah. is stuck in with the more crusher or whatever it is, then I'm going to be able to fight with, with Marathi, use some spells, mm -hmm. clear that big threat piece, and then move on. And it's probably better that Marathi takes three wounds as opposed to obliterate my, my, my snakes, snakes, my witch yeah. elves, my critical pieces, right? yeah um no i like that i like that a lot i think it's something that people um will often try to protect marathi and they try to keep her out and yes she's got some great movement you mentioned you know the um the what's it called the teleport the um i want to say steed of shadows but that's the movement uh, it's the, um, mirror, the dance. mirror dance yeah i'm trying to like the flip right um yeah you can use all those movement shenanigans but it's she's actually a good screen she's a very good screen yeah, and then, like, the way I think about it is three wounds on Marathi is, like, 145 points when you, like, divide her points by the wounds and the number she's taken. So if I can protect at least 145 points worth of my other stuff, it's usually worth it. If I think they're going to kill a unit of snakes if she's not in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how do, how do you win? How do you win with daughters? How do you win? Uh, do a lot of damage and kill them and protect your your fragile pieces so you want to pick your fights um you know you don't want to ever pick a fight you can't win where they're going to kill more stuff than you kill so like effective trades um and then managing marathi's clock is also really big so you want to take as few wounds as possible uh don't you know take three wounds or you know like 145 points worth of damage to kill like a unit of skinks that's like 90 points or whatever they are yeah, uh, don't. you just want to manage your clock and and don't be afraid one thing i've kind of learned by playing around with marathi is don't be afraid to use all that uh, not all that defense um um finest hour yes. use finest hour right because if you're i think we both run a very similar list we've got a cauldron so we're getting the plus one to save then we have finest hours so it's a plus one to save so i'm now on plus two then mm -hmm. I can be mystic shielded. I could be um, all at defense. Um, so any anything that's going into me, there's a really good chance that I can counter that rend and, and be on a pretty pretty sexy three up armor save. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And the the snakes and the witches can be tanky too if you stack enough of the saves. I've had like uh, Kragnos bounce off a unit of snakes and only kill like two of them because they had like a plus three to their save and the six up ward. So. If you if you like combine enough of your save stacking into one thing, you can really uh, be fairly tanky with a couple units if you need to. How do I beat you? If I'm if I'm either and I asked the same question to Ronya yesterday. I said to her, "How do I beat you? Either as a daughter's a cane player, like what's the what's the thing that I want to kind of protect as much as possible so not to lose, or if I'm up against daughters, I'm kind of getting frustrated. How do I beat the daughter's player?" Um, what advice would you give me around beating the faction or not losing? Uh, I think the best way to beat daughters is to um, kill Marathi on schedule. So if she dies at the bottom of two, then you're, you know, that's probably one of your win conditions there. Um, and you want to do that either through mortal wounds in the hero phase, through shooting, um, or if you have to get into combat with the little one and try to avoid the big one. Uh, so that's, uh, if you kill her on schedule, that's great. If they have both snakes, either tie them up or kill them so they're not shooting what they want to shoot at and kind of like control what they're shooting at. Um, and then if you're going against me personally, if you put faction terrain someplace where I don't want to be, I'll probably go after it to try to destroy it. So. <laughs> Marcella has an obsession, folks, uh, with destroying faction. What's your, what's your favorite faction terrain you've destroyed? Trees. Especially so before that they could still teleport. Because before when you destroyed it, they couldn't teleport through it. But now I think the FAQ, they still can. So I would just like stop them from casting through them or teleporting through them and just destroy trees and gnaw holes. When I played 
when I played Sons, I had a big obsession destroying um, OBR terrain. Oh, yeah, that big one. Because I'd put it in the middle of the board. <laughs> Turn one, I'd put, I'd put my Gatebreaker next to it, and I'd destroy it on a two-up. And it, I, I, I had... I think it's like I have these I have these battle scars that I, I at one tournament I played Petrofix Elite when that was really really powerful three games out of five so I think I've got battle scars so like every time I see um, <laughs> that that bone type nexus I just see red <laughs> and I just got to destroy yeah. it but yeah I, um, I also see red when I see faction terrain within range I just want to just want to destroy it especially the boats I like destroying boats too because they get rid of the another- ward. That's another one I have battle scars with. I never forget running like 160 goblins and the the de- no 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 the deep kin player put two boats at the front of my deployment line when the, you know oh. the rules. Are- so basically, I had to use like a whole turn to kind of climb up a boat and move over the boat. And it was Oof. at a time where it used to do damage against you as well. So I'm like forever got got battle scars <laughs> with, with deep kin and their boats as well. Yeah. Is there anything that you kind of learnt or picked up about this army that maybe isn't apparent when I when I read this for the first time? Some things that either you thought were really good that maybe don't translate as well on the tabletop. Some things that maybe kind of surprised you. Um, I know the the Slaughter Queen on Cauldron has kind of piqued a lot of people's attentions, and I even saw like Jack Armstrong, um, very very good player over in the UK, mm-hmm. running around with like four avatars and. You never really saw four avatars in a, in a yeah. list in the old book, right? Yeah, I think um, I really want to, one of the things I want to pull out of this new book is I want to try a list with the Doomfire Warlocks. I want to try to get some play out of them. Um, I think they maybe could be good because they're mounted, so they don't get the, they're not susceptible to the plus one damage and they have spells. Um, so they're they're not great, but I think them with the, a bunch of avatars might be good if, if played appropriately. Um, one thing that I missed my first read through is uh, which brew changed. It used to be until the next hero phase, but now it's just till the end of your turn. So if you keep it on the board, you can't keep it on the board for more than one turn anymore. Yeah. So and if you get if if it's your opponent's turn, you'll you'll lose that buff. So yes. um, back back to the Doomfire Warlocks. Would you reinforce them to a unit of ten because they come in unit of five? Um, would you, yeah, you would you could. make them a unit of ten? Yeah, you could. I think they do they only get the plus to cast when they have five. Yeah. 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 yeah so reinforce them. Oh uh, yeah. So the thing with flaming weapon is only the cat only one of them can is you have to pick one of them to be the person casting it, and only one of the models gets the plus one to damage. Um so I, I kinda the way the rules are written with uh units casting spells or units as wizards, only one of the the models gets plus one for the flaming weapon, unfortunately. Yeah, the whole uh, the whole bounty hunters not... would be good. Not bad. Yeah, I, I don't I don't mind. I just find like if I'm reinforcing the Doomfire Warlocks, um, it's just I'm just like I feel like I could do more more with those points. Yeah. Again, like, I'd rather I'd rather put like a slaughter a slaughter queen on cauldron, or I'd rather find some of those points go somewhere else. Because I always find with my daughters, I'm just so tight. Like there's I want to reinforce another unit or I want to have another unit on the table. And especially because I'm running Marathi, which is 700 points. I could just say points poor. Yeah. I think if you play without her, you have some more options for taking some stuff you don't normally take, but she's, she's really good. So it's, it's hard not to. Do you think she, do you think there's play with her not running her? Like, do you reckon you lose too much without her? I think she, um, you could compensate for not having her by having the Slaughter Queen for a fight in the hero phase. And then um, you could have the Blood Rack with the Shadow Stone for plus one to cast, make up for some spells. It's just you're not going to be able to to cast as many spells as you usually do with Marathi because she's such a good caster because she knows all the spells. Um, and she has Black Horror. So you can, you don't need to have her. Um, and uh, she's very good if you do have her, but there's play without her. Yeah. So I, I, I probably have noticed that snake builds more than others have actually dropped Marathi a bit more than maybe the witch elf builds. Cause I think the witch mm-hmm. elves still need that durable hero. Um, there's still some really good things. Cause as yeah, you mentioned, like she, she can screen, right. But I think yeah. if you drop Marathi the 700 points, there's just so much more you can do with a snake list. Um, yeah. Have. Yeah. Yeah. The only good 
the or one of the good things she brings to the snake list is the plus one attack when she's nearby. That's really good. That's one of the main re reasons I keep her. If she didn't have that, I probably wouldn't run her with the snakes. Is there anything else you'd add to this? Like, I think you've you've been pretty pretty robust in your discussions and your thoughts, and um, I know you've had some interesting games. Like, who do, who who do they play against really well? Um, and maybe I'll ask you the other questions. Like, who who do they struggle against? So we'll go with like. What what are the types of armies that you found the most success? Uh, they seem to be really good against Stormcast now, especially now that the Stormcast can't like double shoot you uh, and get rid of like a huge unit in the beginning. Um, anything with low armor, they're fairly good against. Uh, they struggle against things that have like a super high wound count, like the big stabbers, list, the bone splitters list, uh, fire slayers. They seem to struggle against because they they're so tanky. Um, but yeah, they're, they're good against more things than they're not good against, I would say. And as always, it's player dependent. So no matter like who's running it versus, you know, it's, I think player is the number one factor is who's playing against who, not necessarily the army. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, I was just, I was just reflecting on, um, again, I just literally did a night haunt show like 12 hours ago <laughs> or 24 hours ago. And I was thinking about, um, how hard they can be to lift, but, you know, having my reinforced unit of witch elves with the triple blades, um, getting those 60 attacks in, um, all that slaughter to explode sixes, um, high glider tricks around to do the, oh, yeah. the, the, the buffs, like, you know, they oh, yeah. can do an industrial amount of damage and because they're, I, their their attack uh, sorry their damage one um mm -hmm. they're really good against nighthorn and i think that's something that you need to think about is not just the the rend it's also about having some the high quality dice. yeah yeah high quality weighted diets that would chip through and i think nighthorn's going to be a a terror in the in the um in the meta for some time mm -hmm. yeah especially if you're you can roll four ups if you can roll four ups you should play night haunt for sure <laughs> Oh, it's so true. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to this conversation? Do you, anything about the endless spells? Actually, is there any uh, the blade wind? I, I do want to ask you about the blade wind because it's an endless spell that I've I don't think I've actually ever seen on the table. Neither. Um, yeah, but it does mortal <laughs> wounds. It's good at doing mortal wounds. I think like it passes over stuff and then it hits everything within an inch and then everything it passes over. So it could be good, but I haven't seen it either. Let's let's end it on two questions. One, yeah. let's continue these endless spells. What are the good endless spells that work well with daughters? The universal ones. Uh, definitely cogs, um, and then uh, purple sun is good. You know, as always. Uh, the only thing is, it's hard for daughters to cast it because no one will get a plus one to cast for it unless you're on arcane terrain because it's not in the spell lore. Uh, so purple sun cogs. Um, don't really need the spell portal. But yeah, those are those are the two I think. Would you tap into like Ravenashi or the like Geminids or um, Ravenashi Jaws or um, what else? Just, what else is that? Geminids is okay. It's uh, it used to be better because it would stop like all the commands until I think until the next zero phase. But now it's only until the combat phase. So the Geminids I think aren't quite as good because they they only work for a short amount of time. Would you consider like Lolchin, the boatman, or um, um, Sp uh, yeah? No, I think because um, instead of casting Lolchin, you could do Steed of Shadows. That does basically the same thing, and you don't have to pay points for it. You just get it. So, because I think you and just move sun? eighteen inches. Purple Sun, yeah, definitely Purple Sun. Yeah, being able to now now that they clarified the all the Ren stuff, right? With Purple Sun and you know the high glider tricks and. For me, with Drakey, it means I could be running around with, like, Ren 3. Um, yeah, that's nuts. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Really good. Run 4, right, sometimes, if you're – if the stars align. Yeah, so you, you charge, you have the Gladiatrix, Mind Razor, Purple Sun. Of course, of course, if I get yeah. Mind Razor off. But that's, <laughs> that's so rare these days. Yes. Um, but i got Cogs to re-roll, which is great. Um, and if I'm going to ask you one final question, then you kind of wrap this up. If you could add one unit to Daughters of Cain, like a brand new unit, what would it be? Oh, uh, what are they missing? Question. What are they missing? Are like, they what's missing? the? I think 
they they have so many options. I don't know. They need faction terrain. If they could add faction terrain, I would stop destroying other people's faction terrain. <laughs> <coughs> what, what does it do? <laughs> what would it do? Uh, I don't know. It'd probably be like uh, similar to the cauldron or the avatar. And maybe like you sacrifice your own units or your own models or, or someone else's models if they're near the faction terrain, and then you get like even more buffs. One more thing we forgot to talk about that maybe might be over overlooked is um, between the battle tomes, I just want to call it out. We don't actually have to discuss it, but um, one of the ally choices has now rejoined the book. So um, you used to have Stormcast, then yeah. you lost them because Marathi attacked and we're friends again. Kikuron. Then Marathi in the law allied back with Stormcast to defeat Kragnos and the destruction. So now mm -hmm. Stormcast are back as allies in Daughters, which means you've now got access to another 80, um, 80 different war scrolls in addition to like cities and the Duarden and the other things. So it does give you a lot of great options, especially if you want to bring in Storm Drake Guard. I, I, I've actually seen a few people playing around with the Stormcast Chariot which I think is not a bad mm -hmm. shout, 165 points. I think it's like a base three-up armor save with um, 12 wounds or something. Like, it's actually not a bad little piece. And it does mortal yeah. wounds like a mini stone horn. Yeah, or like three long strikes with a unit of birds could be good for the plus one to hit. Yeah, yeah. even the Aether Wings in themselves, like 65 points for a really mm -hmm. cheap chaff that can go score objectives. I think there's a lot of great things, but ultimately that's just points not going into your daughters. So that's true. Um, it's always tough. Yeah, lots of options now. Any shout outs? Any record any people you want to like give love to? We know we know where this is going. We both know. You haven't got the shirt on, but <laughs> oh okay. So uh I have I have two shout outs actually. One is um I just had some artwork commissioned by an artist. Her name is Jade. If you go to my Twitter at paralysis, um, I think it's like my second to last post, uh, where she she drew like me as big Marathi with like the snake. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to put it on like a t-shirt and um, yeah. So there, and so she's taking commissions right now. She's open for commissions. And then also I run the team America, uh, one of the team America stores. Um, so you can search Amazon for us Wargaming, us national Wargaming team. And you could buy these shirts and there's a Teespring store as well. Uh, so if you want some team America merch, all the proceeds help towards getting the next team over next year and covering the costs for like the tickets and hotels and stuff. So oh, that's, that's very cool. And is there anyone else you want to shout out? Uh, no, nope, just you, those two. Jade and team America. <laughs> so no, oh, so and sweet. also there's a discord, um, run by this guy. He's a coach for AOS. Uh, so if you want to join his discord and like, and subscribe. <laughs> I was, trying, I was trying to give the tough crowd a shout. I, I, oh, I, yes. Tough crowd them. forever. <laughs> By the way, the Encantor, another good ally because you just straight out auto un, auto just like unbind. So you just like oh, no yeah. any spell for you. Good. Another good ally choice. And it's like a very durable wizard. I think it's like a three up armor save wizard. So the auto what, unbind once per battle, no dice roll is um is definitely one yeah you're getting you're getting booed Mayo, out jacob so Barrett, jacob's jacob's you know, tough on his crowd best behavior. has a sword too they have a store as well so if you want tough yeah. crowd merch you could buy tough crowd merch <laughs> well i'm always in the i'm always in the market for a singlet it's winter at the moment but uh maybe yeah, maybe like just romper? maybe i'm coming jacob, to lvo can you, get on maybe... that? can you get on a romper tough crowd romper <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll sort this out. Yeah. <laughs> Marcella, it was awesome having you back. Um, we had you, you know, um, in the last book as, as third edition came out. I was a bit sketchy at the time because I was under a four-month lockdown. I was trying to play Dawn under TTS and it was driving <laughs> me insane. I'm in such a better headspace because Witch Elves actually do their thing. But it's awesome for me to see that Witch Elves, Bow Snakes, uh, Marathi, No Marathi, Combat Snakes, um, they all are viable. The Avatar is back being viable. The Doomfire Warlocks are viable. The, the Slaughter Queen on Cauldron is great. There's just so many great choices. And, hey, you know, nothing says auto win like Canary with their million battle Ooh. tactics they do by themselves. 
here. I have seen some lists, though, taking three Canera units, which I thought is fascinating. It's almost like a yeah. bit of redundancy given. Um, Case one dies. Given, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been told, don't, don't tell anyone about the secret store. Oh, luckily, oh, this secret. is only a small channel. No one's going to no oh, okay. hear about that. Secret yeah, store. the secret store. No one knows about <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to go get some lunch. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. Let me know in the comment section, as always, how you're building your daughters. What do you think about um, Marcella's thoughts around the snake variety? We will do a different stream as well with uh, another player talking a bit more about the, the witch elves and the Sister of Slaughter style um, builds. And we can kind of compare the two because I think there's a lot of diversity and it's great that it's not just this one list that kind of rules them all, which was the Marathi and the Bow Snakes. That kind of drove me insane and actually stopped me from playing Daughters. I played it for a little bit. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. And I completely shelled Daughters until this book dropped. So me personally, I've been loving this. Yeah, I love not having to play Bow Snakes anymore. Best part of the new book. Oh, it was so boring. <laughs> just like snakes, yeah. double reinforced Bow Snakes, shoot, yeah. shoot, shoot the end <laughs> all right let's wrap this up thank you marcella thank you for everyone who listened to the stream thank you for everyone who's watching this on replay um and you all know the deal like subscribe patron i don't know comment all the youtube -y type stuff all right mm, thanks for having out. me on as always, thanks everyone. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would love it if you pressed like on the video, as well as left me a comment to let me know what your thoughts are. The conversation will continue over on Discord and the link is down below in the video description. I want to give a massive shout out as well to the AOS Coach Patreons and YouTube members who are going in and the funds are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you're all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a one on a redeploy.